18 hours out. Destination unknown, a military secret. The largest overseas expedition ever to see, guarded by the blue ensign of the American Navy. Southwards from Britain, some 3,000 miles away, an even greater convoy, twice the size, moves in its appointed place across the seas, shielded by the white ensign of the British Navy. Destroyers in close support, cruisers on the flanks, and beyond the horizon, the battleships. From the decks of aircraft carriers, and from the shore, Planes of the Fleet Air Arm and Coastal Command patrol the skies and search the seas, advance outposts of an elaborate protective screen. East Northeast, the American convoy. Southwest by West, the British. Nothing like these two armadas had disturbed the waters since the world was made. This is a combined operation an operation that began some four months earlier in Washington, D.C. The President of the United States welcomed the Prime Minister of Great Britain. The gravity of the moment had brought them together. The lights burned all night that night in the White House where the two leaders met with their combined chiefs of staffs. For this was the picture taking all too definite form in the minds of the civil, military and naval leaders now locked in secret conference. Two Axis spearheads were headed east. In the north, von Bock was hewing his way through the Ukraine to the Caucasus. In the south, Rommel was driving toward the Egyptian border. These two spearheads were intended to meet in Iran and head eastward towards India. In the Orient, Japan had occupied the coast of China, the East Indies, Malaya, and Burma in preparation for the drive westward through India. If these two enemy spearheads were allowed to meet, Russia and China, except for their remote Arctic ports, would be completely isolated. Japanese raw materials and German production would be combined. The peoples of Europe, Asia, and Africa, seven-eighths of the world's population, would be enslaved. By morning a decision, both bold and revolutionary. Bold because in this our darkest hour we dared to take the offensive. Revolutionary because that offensive was conceived, planned and executed by the peoples of two nations. The time and the place had been agreed upon. code name for the combined operation was Acrobat. The two great elements were time and secrecy. 125 days in which to plan and launch an offensive from bases 3,000 miles apart. An operation involving hundreds of thousands of American and British soldiers and sailors. Millions of American and British working men and women. Only by whose combined efforts could the plan become a reality but from whom the plan itself must be kept secret. A few score men, no more, knew in its entirety the plan for this greatest of combined operations. In London and Washington, British and American officers were placed at adjoining desks to work through the days and nights of grinding toil that lay ahead. And gradually, in the enforced daily intimacy, men grew to know and respect each other. Thus was born the relationship out of which an Allied army came into being. To them came hourly reports on the vast undertaking of forging the striking weapon. It was a race against time.
United States, men and supplies poured eastward toward the Atlantic seaboard. In Britain also, by road and rail, an army was on the move. Day and night, the dockers worked. Records were broken in tonnage put aboard in one ship. For every soldier, British and American, 10 tons of equipment. On both sides of the Atlantic, the effort was tremendous. Guns, trucks, aircraft, petrol, water, food, barbed wire, locomotive. Of ammunition alone, we shipped 520 different kinds. sailed on time and in absolute secrecy. Mm -hmm. 